Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to use Quant Stats, which is an open source Python library for portfolio analytics. It helps portfolio managers understand their performance better by providing them with in-depth analytics and risk metrics. So let's say you're some financial advisor or portfolio manager and a bunch of people come are coming to you with all their money and they want a return on their investment and they don't even know why they need you. They're like, why don't I just buy the S&P 500? What do I need a portfolio manager for? Well, you want to show them some data showing you can put them in the right assets uh, for the amount of risk they're comfortable with and you want to show that they'll get a return on their investment and ideally it's higher than some be benchmark like the S&P 500. So how do you do that? How do you make a cool little sheet of paper that you can put in, show them some nice pretty charts and graphs, showing them, you know, they're going to get a better return by working with you. Well, you can learn a few lines of Python code and crank out one of these charts, the strategy uh, tear, sheet, tear sheet here. And I guess you print that out and give them this piece of paper and show, look, this is the S&P 500, this little yellow orange line here. And if you invest with my fund, here's the blue line, boom there and the cumulative return for my strategy is 672 percent versus the benchmark of 360 percent and look i had a less of a drawdown through throughout this whole 10-year uh, period so why wouldn't you want to invest in my fund i'll take care of your money they get what they want which is a better return you take a couple percent off the top and everyone is happy so that's why i'm going to show you how to use quant stats today uh, you're just going to write a few lines of Python code, and it's going to generate all these nice reports and images, and then you can start up your little uh, portfolio management business or whatever, however you want to use this. Maybe you just want to use it uh, for your own purposes. So um, as you can see here, um, first of all, let's thank the author of this package, Skyron Arousey, Arousey, Arousey. Um, and he wrote the Y Finance package as well that we've used a lot on the channel. And I'm surprised I actually haven't seen this library for, before. Uh, I saw it on Reddit recently. I'm like, oh, why, why haven't I used this? So I decided to check this out a little bit. Thought I would share it on the channel. So he wrote uh, Y Finance, Quant Stats, and also has some other tools. And it looks like he has his own company he started here as well. So he's working on tools for traders. So thank you, Ron, and other open source uh, authors like this for creating cool libraries like this. So you can see here before we write the code, uh, QuantStats provided, uh, it's comprised of three main modules. It has stats, so you can get a stock and calculate some various stats, like what was the compound annual growth rate of this particular uh, stock or ETF over 10 years or five year period or whatever you plug in there, uh, and a bunch of other metrics. Then there's plots, right? You don't just want the numerical values, you want to graphically uh, show the performance so that you can uh, easily visualize all these as an image. And also there's these report, this report style, which is what I'm showing here, where you can actually generate an HTML file and a giant report here, and you can toss these in a binder or in your little pamphlet that you send to a bunch of uh, employers to try to market your fund or whatever it is uh, portfolio managers do. Um, so, yeah, there's a little quick start here, and let's go ahead and get started writing some Python code. As always, like and subscribe below if you like this type of content. Buy me a coffee, click my Interactive Brokers link. All those help support the channel. And um, if anyone responds saying they're me and they're doing consulting and use WhatsApp, I don't use any of that stuff, so it's not me. It's a bunch of scammers. Hopefully everyone knows that by now. All right, so as usual, I have an empty Visual Studio uh, code editor open. Nothing up my sleeve. Um, I have a new folder and I just called it quant stats demo. I'll put all the source code in GitHub as usual. I'm gonna create a couple new files. I'm gonna do a single stock.py and a portfolio.py, right? And the reason I'm doing that is because I wanna start off really basic, just uh, show you some simple metrics on a single stock and then we'll build a basket of multiple stocks with different percentage allocations and compare the different uh, portfolio uh, metrics on each of those, visualize it and show you some more advanced features of the library. So I'm gonna start here first with a single stock.py. Uh, let me make sure I install the uh, dependencies. And so you see um, on the, the library's GitHub page, so github.com slash ronarousey slash quantstats, you can Google it, um, it'll come up here, you see they import quantstats as QS, right? So we're importing a quant stats. And so what I want to do is do pip install, install a quant stats in my command line. Make sure I have the dependencies that'll install quant stats and a couple of the other things it depends on. So it actually uses Y Finance under the hood if you want to download a daily, uh, daily historical data. 
um, and it di downloads a couple of visualization libraries like uh, Seaborn and Pandas if you don't have it already. So uh, just uh, pip installing quantstat should install everything you need. And then you see it has a couple lines here. It has this line for extending pandas, and it also has this call to download returns for a stock. So I'm going to get first show you uh, this line of code, and then we'll talk about what this extend pandas does right here. So I'm going to uh, take that right here, and I'm going to do stock equals QS. So we import a quant stats as QS. So we're doing QS.utils.download returns, and this is just a method or function on QS.utils, and it accepts a, a ticker symbol, so Facebook stock there. And so if I look at download returns, I jumped into the function signature. People have asked how I do this. I have Visual Studio Code, and I also have the Python extension. So I should do a whole video just on how my editor is set up because a lot of people have asked about this. So if I go to preferences and go to extensions and uh, write Python here, you'll see that I have this IntelliSense uh, extension installed that's from Microsoft. I have that installed in Visual Studio Code. All this stuff is free. And what I can do is do a command and then I click on download return uh, on my Mac and it'll show me the function signature from uh, quantstats.utils. So a lot of times you need to look at the source code of a library you're working with, an open source library, and you wanna see what the function signature looks like. So you can see I can download the returns. I can pass it a ticker symbol. And there's also this period uh, parameter. So it defaults to max, so it'll get all the historical data for a symbol, but you could also put like one year, for instance, if you wanted to start your report on a certain uh, date, right? So single stock, Facebook, and then I'm just gonna print the stock like this, and that returns this data in a pandas data frame. And so that's all stored in stock. And so you can see it gets the entire history of Facebook. And so you know that uh, in 2012, Facebook IPO'd. And you can see each day it just shows the daily return. And what this library is able to do is get all those different daily returns and aggregate them and slice them and dice them different ways, visualize them to show you know the year, yearly returns, monthly returns, uh, generates heat maps and charts and a lot of cool stuff you can do just with these uh, daily returns. So you see how I downloaded the returns right here. Now notice um, there's this qs.stats.sharp for the uh, sharp ratio, right? And so I'm gonna paste that in as well. And so that's qs.stats.sharp. You notice they didn't store uh, this value in a variable here. So um, I think this demo is assuming you're working inside of a Jupyter Notebook. And if you follow this channel, you know I haven't really used Jupyter Notebooks very much on this channel. This is a good library though if you're gonna use a Jupyter Notebooks. So if I just call this function directly, I think it'll just show you some data in line inside of the Jupyter Notebook. But since I'm printing it to the console, I'm just gonna say uh, sharp ratio equals that and I'm just gonna print a sharp ratio like that, right? So there's a bunch of metrics built in, and so I can run this, it'll download the returns, and it'll show me uh, this sharp ratio value right here. So what does that line extend pandas do? So if I go back here, it has this line qs.extend pandas. So what I can do is put that at the top, and what it does is add these different methods here, like uh, stats sharp here, and it just adds them to the stock object itself. So since this is a pandas data frame, it'll add a bunch of functions and attach them to stock, right? And so what I can do here uh, with that extend pandas, now if I print a dir, so uh, in Python you can type dir, and some object, and I'll show you all the different functions available um, on that object. And so you see I have this big list of objects, or of functions on the stock object, and now you see it has a bunch of new functions that are not built into Pandas. So Pandas has a bunch of different built-in functions, but notice all of a sudden now I have a method called uh, plot earnings, plot histogram, and you see how uh, sharp here is built in, and you can see how I get, uh, what else do I have? Uh, CAGR, so CAGR here. And so I have all these built-in functions now. So now instead of typing qs.stats.sharp, I can type just stock.cager like that, right? And so if I print that and then comment that out, let's see what that gets us, right? So you see, I just typed uh, stock.cager and I got uh, 0.26, so 26% a compound annual growth rate on Facebook stock, which is great. Outperformed the S&P 500. That's been a great stock to own over the last decade. And so now I can just call these methods directly on my stock object rather than type qs.utils, right? What are the drawbacks of that? Well, I can't easily use IntelliSense here, 
uh, my editor doesn't smartly know that uh, pandas is extended here, so I can't, when I try to jump into that code, I can't. So if I wanna see uh, the function signature, uh, it's easier for me to do like that. You see how I have all this nice auto completion now, right? And it shows me uh, the uh, parameters that I can use on this particular function, okay? So I'm just gonna call it like this for now, and then I'll jump into the code as necessary to show you uh, what else we can do. All right, so what are some other stats that I can show on an individual stock? Well, I can do uh, stock dot uh, monthly returns, for instance. So that's another function that's available. So I'll print that. And also we can show uh, the max drawdown. So I'm gonna print um, the stock max drawdown, just like that. Okay, and so I can show you the monthly returns and you can see this shows you this nice like matrix format, right? This table. And so I can see January, 2012, that was the return. September, 2019, you can see, it looks like it's down 4%. And then I can also see my max drawdown that I printed right here, which was uh, 53%. So it looks like at some point there was a 53% uh, drawdown in Facebook stock. So, um, that's kind of hard to visualize, you know, those are some nice numbers, but we need some type of visualization to be able to like know, you know, when was this 53% drawdown you had to live through. So let's uh, use some of these plotting functions that are built in. So um, this library is not super well documented, like they don't write it all out. You need to be able to look at the source code to figure out how to do all this stuff. And so one thing uh, the, the author does here is they show a complete list of available methods just by using uh, this list comprehension here. So he's saying use Python's built-in uh, mechanisms of showing the different functions that are available. And so rather than list them all out, he just looped through all of them and showed them. So let me show you how to do that and what this means. So f for f and dirqs.stats. And so what this does is I showed all of the functions available on qs.stats. So you can uh, return those, Python will return those as a list. And this is just looping th those through, looping through those in line, right? So for each item, it's printing it out on a separate line. And it's saying if the first character is not an underscore. So it filters out all these built-in uh, private Python methods here and just shows you what's built in to qs.stats. And so if I uh, print this out, right, this list comprehension, you should see a bunch of different available methods that we can call, right? So look at that, this is exactly, so it says uh, CAGR, for instance, consecutive wins, expected shortfall, outlier win ratio, so there's a bunch of other uh, functions that we can call. So we've already used a few of the functions available in qs.stats. Let's see what's available just on the stock object now. So if I plug that in, you should see a bunch of different functions uh, that we can call. Not only can we call the stats functions, we can recall the reporting functions and the plotting functions that I mentioned, right? And so what I can do now is uh, show you how much money you would have earned if you bought a certain amount of Facebook stock, for instance, right? So you see there's this plot daily returns, there's plot drawdown, there's plot earnings. So let's see uh, plot earnings, for instance. So let's mark down a couple of these functions we wanna try out. So I'm gonna try out uh, plot earnings. We'll do this uh, plot monthly heat map, which I think is interesting. Plot monthly heat map. And then we'll also do uh, yearly returns as well. So plot yearly returns. And let's see what those look like. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is do a stock.plot earnings like that. And let's see what happens. And you'll see that uh, nothing happened here, and that's because I need some place to save a file here. And so what I want to do is qs.plots.save, or plot earnings, no, dot earnings, just like that. And you see those are the different uh, parameters. You can see I can give it a starting balance, and I can also give it um, a file to save my figure to. So that's the save fig parameter. And so if you study through this code and want to see what's going on, this isn't super well documented. It assumes that you can read the code a little bit. But what I found is tracing this through, uh, you can see you can give it a file name where you want to save the figure to. And so I can do this uh, save fig equals. And I'm going to create a new folder called output just to save all our figures to. And then I'm going to save my figure to output slash uh, uh, facebookearnings.png. 
And then I am also gonna give a starting balance. Let's assume I put $100,000 in Facebook when it IPO'd, right? And let's see if that does anything. So I'm gonna comment that out, run this. And then you see it outputs this PNG file right here. I can click on that and boom, look at that. Nice graph here just by calling one function. You see I put my $100,000 in right there. And look at that, this year hit the $1 million mark right there. So, so there you go, just go all in on Facebook, hold it for 10 years, right? No big deal, but you'll see it wasn't that easy. It's very easy in hindsight to say if you would have put 10,000 in, you'd get your million dollars, but it wasn't that easy. You know, this looks like probably the big drawdown that happened right here. Uh, you remember the end of 2018. Uh, wasn't that easy that last quarter of 2018 there's pretty big sell-off and even right here at Facebook's IPO there was a lot of doubt there so 2012 returns were not that good right and so let's plot like a monthly heat map so um, we can plot another chart here so let's do a stock dot plot uh, monthly heat map right and then let's save another figure to output Facebook monthly heat map dot PNG and let's see what that looks like. Let's see if we can get any more, anything else interesting. So yeah, look at this heat map. This helps us visualize it a bit better to see when we had some of these big drops in Facebook. And you look, even after the IPO of Facebook here, it wasn't that hot of an IPO. Big 30% drawdown right there. Why was that? So uh, that was July of 2012. And we can look at July 2012 of Facebook just to figure out why? Probably some type of earnings related thing, right? Facebook reports a loss. They didn't even make money, right? So yeah, people were not that impressed uh, by Facebook. And if you look here, uh, you'll see um, they didn't even, uh, they're starting to figure out how to generate revenue from mobile ads. So the iPhone had been out for a little bit, but uh, Facebook didn't really know, uh, they didn't have their mobile strategy in line yet. So you realize how early, even though Facebook seems like it's been around forever, uh, a lot of times you'll think you missed the boat on things, but you know, look how early, you know, even just 10 years ago, Facebook, nine years ago, Facebook didn't even know what they were doing on mobile. And then if you look on at July of 2013, right? Why did they, it rock it up 47% right there? It wasn't until, uh, 2013 Facebook's mobile first strategy pays off on Wall Street. So revenue grows 72% on mobile ads. So it wasn't until like eight years ago when Facebook started figuring out how to make money on smartphone devices that we take for granted now. So, so yeah, that's the first few examples of this library, how you can just take an individual stock and get some quick visualizations and metrics on that stock and you know easily pinpoint like when Facebook had problems, when Facebook started uh, turning it around, got some quick charts and graphs and there's a bunch of different metrics you can try out and play around with. So uh, let's look at some portfolio metrics and some different asset allocations to see how they perform against each other. All right, so I'm gonna go over to my uh, portfolio.py now, and we'll do the same thing again. So I'll import quantstats as QS, and I'll do my uh, QS.extendpandas, just like that. And let's go ahead and start off with a, a new symbol, and let's try out one of these uh, reporting functions. So if we look uh, down here, you see there's reports.html, like that. So we can do QS.reports.html, give it um, a stock and then, or we can just do stock dot reports, right? So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna get um, some data again on individual symbol. And so let's start thinking about different things that people put in their portfolio. You know, the old fashioned way to do it is like 60% stocks, 40% bonds. But as you've seen in the past year or two, how people are uh, putting all kinds of things in the portfolio now, and that's how I feel like a lot of different portfolio managers and asset allocators are considering all types of things now. Like I talked to uh, 
Eric Irvin, who's talked to me, shout out to him from OnRamp Invest. He's trying to make uh, these tools that show these investment advisors how to allocate a certain percentage of their money to crypto. And they're showing uh, reports like like the one I showed you to show, you know, the performance metrics. If you put, uh, you know, let's say you put one or two percent of your money in crypt in Bitcoin or five percent, how you know you would have got this massively better return without that much additional risk. So uh, being able to compare a variety of portfolios. Um, it's super valuable and we need to think beyond, you know, all in S&P 500 or 60, 40 stocks and bonds. You know, people are holding percentages of crypto assets, NFTs, altcoins. Uh, yeah, a lot of people are uh, angel investing now and doing riskier things like uh, trading options. And you just need to decide what percentage of your portfolio that you can allocate to all these different things. So, uh, yeah, people used to uh, hold gold. So let's let's use gold as our first example. So let's say you're a gold bug and you're like, oh, I need to uh, put all my money into gold. I don't think anyone, there's less and less people like this these days, but uh, this is gonna be the first example I use. This was very common though, like 10 years ago, I would say. So I'm gonna do qs.utils.download returns. And let's just compare GLD, which is the gold ETF, right? Let's just get its returns. And then let's just put out uh, one of our reports. So I'm going to do a qs.reports.html. Okay. And I just need to give it a stock. So I'm going to pass it a stock. And then for this function, if I jump in, um, you will see that uh, it takes a file name. So you give it a, a file name here and it'll save you an actual HTML file. And I can also give this strategy a tier sheet here. So a title. So I'm going to do a, let's do a title. And then we'll call this uh, PTL, Part-Time Larry Investments, right? It's my fund name. And then download uh, file name. And then I'm going to go to my output directory. And I'm just going to show uh, gold performance. So let's say I'm just some gold gold pumper. And I'm like Peter Schiff or one of these guys that says, you should put money as, uh, in gold. It's performed well for 2,000 years, right? And that's why it's the best asset, right? So... I want to show my chart of that and present it to my clients. So um, let's see if I can get this uh, file must be specified, name must be specified. Let's see, what did I do wrong? Download file name. Actually, I think it's output is the name of the parameter. So I'm gonna do uh, output equals output gold.html. And let's see if I can get my gold report, All right? There it goes. Gold.html, you see we have all this HTML that's printed out here with all these uh, SVG graphics and so forth. So that's how it works under the hood. OSX, I can just open this file. So I'm gonna open output uh, gld.html or you can just open it in your browser and open that. And you see, here's my presentation, PTL investments, put your money in gold for the last, what, 15 years here. And you can see, pretty good ret return, a uh, 270% return right there, which is great compound annual growth rate of 8%. And you can see if you invest in gold right here through the financial crisis and the aftermath, like a few years later, precious metals had a huge run there. So you looked uh, like a genius. So if you go back and Google uh, Peter Schiff in 2011, you'll see articles like this. Peter Schiff say it says no ceiling for gold prices, you can even go back on uh, YouTube, right? And I saved this just to show what people were saying about gold during this period of time. So if I look at this, I think the people who are buying treasury, right? Peter Schiff, no, no ceiling for gold prices, August 20th, uh, 2011. Almost everybody has been wrong and I've been right. Uh, you know, wow. And so this guy is on top of the world here uh, talking about gold and there's all these websites selling gold and so forth. As you can guess, that was August 20th, 2011. No ceiling in gold. 2011, August 2011, you see right there, that was actually uh, the top in gold. Everyone started piling in, uh, went parabolic there, and that was the top uh, in gold for a very, very long time. So, so gold returned 270%, but how do I compare that against another asset? Sure, a few hundred percent is good, but let's just compare that to the S&P 500. So I can do qs.reports.html uh, stock, and I can compare that to SPY by passing that as a parameter. And then I can do title equals, you know, gold versus SPY. 
and then output that to a file called uh, gold versus spy.html like that. And let's run that. And need an equal sign. And more stuff, comma. All right, so I'll let that run. And let's see if I can open my new report. You'll see my output uh, file here should get generated. All right, so you see I have a gold versus spy there. So uh, open output slash gold versus spy. Open that. So now you can see in this new report, uh, if you held gold this whole 15 year period and the S&P 500, S&P 500, you're still uh, outperforming here, right? And you, uh, gold was outperforming for a while, but as of the current date, uh, S&P 500 has outperformed uh, significantly. And if you were able to, if you just selected, what if you just wanna look at what happened over the past decade? Well, we can do another parameter here. So I can do gold versus spy. And I can say when I download the returns here, if I do period instead of the default of period max, if I do the period of 10 years, right? And I'll just comment that out for speed and I'll run that. And let's just look at gold versus the S&P 500 over the last 10 year period. And let's see what those results are. And so I'll open that again and you'll see uh, gold has really sucked for the last decade, right? So yeah, if you look at this, gold seems like it hasn't done really anything since the existence of uh, crypto, really. Like, isn't this around where Bitcoin came out? And then you see the S&P 500, you know, has crushed it um, over the past decade. And then it looks like the cumulative return of gold is barely even positive right now. So there's a comparison of putting your money in gold versus the S&P 500. Obviously, you're probably not going to put 100% of your money in gold. So let's get to some more realistic scenarios. So how did you outperform the S&P 500 over the past 10 years? Well, obviously, the way, place to be was in tech. So uh, you could easily just put your money in uh, QQQ, for instance, right? And so we could do uh, download the returns of QQQ. And so we could just download the 10 year returns for QQQ and do another report and compare uh, downloading the returns of QQQ for the 10 year period, comparing it to SPY and we'll do a QQQ versus SPY, uh, just like this, get us another report. And let's just look at some of the additional statistics that this uh, reporting functionality uh, gets us. So, uh, so I'm going to open the uh, QQQ. So uh, output QQQ versus SPY.html. You see the blue line, the strategy QQQ has massively outperformed the S&P 500 by you know almost double. And you can see the max drawdown was less than the S&P 500. Uh, if you'll remember when the COVID crash happened, uh, big tech, uh, big cap, large cap tech stocks like Apple and uh, Amazon, they actually perform, you know, they held up pretty well, like they didn't give it up quite as quickly because, you know, they actually benefited, uh, tech actually benefited from COVID in a lot of ways. And so you can see that tech has been the place to be for the last 10 years. And you can experiment with this and look, compare all of the different uh, statistics it gives you. And so you can see these same metrics that I ran functions for. Compound annual growth rate on a QQQ was much better. You see the max drawdown was less. Uh, you spent less uh, less days in a drawdown. Um, the vol it was a little bit uh, more volatile uh, and so forth. So there's tons and tons of statistics here. You can see uh, month to date, three months, different time frames, best day, worst day, whole bunch of stuff. And think how this replaces so many articles, you know, that are on the internet and all these links. People think they're performing some great analysis. Like if you put, if you bought Amazon stock 10 years ago, you know, there's a million articles like this and you can replace them with like two lines of code right here and run it for however you want. So there's, there's no reason for these big long articles on this. You know, you could probably generate these articles with code. I don't, I'm sure a writer doesn't actually even write these. I'm sure there's some template, but uh, yeah, you can just start with any balance. You can generate some bunch of statistics and words and probably write, replace a lot of these news articles, sites and videos and whatnot. Just plug in different stocks, different starting balances and say, oh, if you put a hundred thousand in Facebook 10 years ago, um, yeah. And, you know, you don't even need a financial advisor, right? You can run all the different uh, 
simulations yourself, you can see how I only wrote a couple lines of code. Or if you're a financial advisor, this library is easy enough where even a financial advisor could write uh, this code and show it uh, to their clients. It's probably, probably a useful uh, library if you're presenting some new investment opportunities. So how would you outperform uh, QQQ over the past uh, 10 years? Well, obviously, let's see what happens if we add uh, some leverage, some uh, triple TQQ, right? Uh, we have this uh, TQQQ, and that's like the 3X QQQ, which is uh, much more uh, volatile, but actually performed even uh, better. So if I compare TQQQ over a 10-year period, to uh, regular QQQ, right? Uh, let's just look at some of those just for fun. And so we'll just do a TQQQ versus QQQ. Uh, run that guy and we can open that up. And you can see a QQQ, which used to look good on the other chart. When you see this uh, triple Qs, right? 3X leverage, um, you can see your cumulative returns are ridiculous and all of a sudden QQQ. You know, 700% return doesn't look like very much at all, but look at this max drawdown. And that's what this is really all about. If you're investing, you know, your million dollars or whatever, can you really live through a 70% drawdown, even though it actually resulted in greater returns? You know, that's, that's pretty steep, you know, when it's 3X like that. So when everything is tripled in magnitude, you can get a better return if you're on the right side of that trade but the volatility is ridiculous and you probably can't hold through that. And that I think is what a lot of uh, financial advice is about. You know, what, what, what's your risk tolerance? Uh, what are you willing to uh, follow the process on? What can you hold through and allocating your funds accordingly? You know, can you even stand holding a crypto knowing that it might, you know, drop by 90%? Like Ethereum, I think went down like from what, 1700, 1400 to like back to $80. So it dropped like 95%. So, uh, you know, can you, can you hold a significant amount of your portfolio in Ethereum or some of these other uh, new assets? Maybe, maybe not. So if you're thinking about allocating some of your money to crypto or some other assets, you can run some of these scenarios and think to yourself in advance, uh, if it went to the zero, how much did it affect my yearly return and can I live with that? And I think a lot of people right now are finding that, uh, I think I heard some statistics where if you put, you know, instead of 60, 40 stock and bond portfolio, if you take like one or 2% of the bond or stock side, put it into crypto, right? Even if the crypto went to zero, your return went from, you know, down by like 0.2% per year, which you could live with, right? But it turns out your portf your overall performance would have been uh, much better if you look at the past. And But if it went to zero, you know, you didn't really miss out on that much. So allocating a, a little of your money to some, one of these big uh, asymmetric opportunities could be a good idea for you. So the last thing I want to do, obviously, you're probably curious at this point, uh, you're like, what if I want to make my own individual index, right? My own uh, basket of individual stocks that I pick, right? Uh, you don't want to just buy QQQ necessarily. What if I want to weight my own uh, ETF? Let's say I'm building my own ARK fund, right? And I want to allocate some to Roku and Shopify or whatever else they buy, and I'm making my own ticker. How do I uh, use this to test the performance of a basket of stocks? Uh, this isn't very well documented on uh, the GitHub, so I had to dig into the source code a little bit to see how this works. And so here's how it works. So there's actually uh, a function called make index. So it's qs.utils.makeindex, like that, right? So I dug in here, and you see it has this ticker weights. And if you look through this uh, dot items, I could tell that was a dictionary. Right, so what it wants is a dictionary of weights, so a symbol and the weight in that particular index, and it downloads the returns of all of them, right? And then it multiplies by the weight and the ticker, and then you can do calculations on that index that you created yourself, right? So I'm gonna do make index, and I need to give it a ticker's dictionary, right? And so let's say, just for a basic example, I made a ticker symbol called for Fang. So, and I actually, actually I have a lot of money allocated to Fang, but without Netflix, I did it with Microsoft. So uh, let's say you want to do uh, Facebook, right? 0 0.25. And this has been, I've been overweight these stocks this year. So um, Apple and Amazon. So I have Apple in mine. And then instead of Netflix, I've been doing Microsoft and then Google, right? 
And so uh, this is actually a lot of my portfolio is in this. So um, if I did 0 0.2 on Facebook, uh, Apple, Amazon, and Microsoft, I can just weight all of these different ways or I could do 0.3, right? So this is 20% to each one of those uh, symbols. And so that's my ticker dictionary. I wanna make an index and give it my uh, weightings here. And this will return my uh, portfolio. So I'll just call that portfolio, right? And then what I can do here is portfolio equals that make index. And then I can just do my qs.reports.html and give it my portfolio. And I'll call it the FAMG, or sorry, uh, the FMAGA portfolio is what I call this. And then so uh, FMAGA here, and then we can compare that uh, versus QQQ, for instance. And then we can do the output of my FANG stocks. So I could do output uh, FMAGA versus QQQ.html, right? And output that, and let's see if that works. So you can experiment with this, try some different baskets, see the characteristics of whatever uh, fund or portfolio you come up with and decide uh, what's best for you. And I will open that. And then I'll do that. And you can see uh, this strategy over the past 10 years uh, has done really great. Obviously, if you've uh, held uh, all the FANG stocks for the past uh, 10 years, so it's a good basket of stocks um, in hindsight looks great, had huge returns over just QQ, QQQ. And yeah, and that's pretty much all I want to show about the Quant Stats library. Uh, thank you to the author of this library. We went over the different uh, aspects of it, including calculating various uh, metrics. There's tons of them built in, explore them all, showed, showed how to uh, write out some plots, store those as PNG files, or you can output those to your Jupyter notebook if you want to just do it inline in a notebook. And we use the report functionality to generate these HTML tear sheets and actually look this up to see what, what, what are these tear sheets. And this literally refers to the industry one page summary of a mutual fund or individual company, right? And there's like prospectus and there's all these, this paperwork that gets sent out if you're advertising a particular uh, portfolio. So there you go. There's how you do it. Uh, there's some cool tools that you can use. And I hope you like this stock video. I've been away for a few weeks. I was on vacation uh, and I'm also learning some new things. I learned a little bit of solidity and a little bit more Web3 stuff. So I hope to do some demos for some smart contracts and Ethereum stuff soon as well. So uh, that's it for now. Stay tuned for the next video. Thanks.